industry that males mm-hmm. still not some males still not uh accepting women as equals in this industry right and you know and it's funny because you're right because sometimes i run into you know men they'd be like when i say i got my you know i have my cdl they kind of look funny but then sometimes when i would be out on the road like coming through the rest areas or something mm-hmm. and there would be some men out there that were truckers that would realize i'm a truck female they would give me my pop you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. but but doing, years, but doing school, um, you. All you have to do is stay a minute, just take your time. The clock is ticking, so stay. All you have to do is stay. Yes, sir. Uh, what's going on, everybody? Lockout men, back in the place to be. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you for joining me. If you guys don't know me already, you should already know who I am. I'm Lockout Man, and this is the Lockout Man podcast show. Thank you guys for joining. I really do appreciate it. Tonight's episode is very simple. I got a, I got a, I got a guest. I got a podcast interview, interview for you guys tonight. So if you guys ready for it, why don't you take the time to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button. You know what I'm saying? That bell and that all button brings everybody to the table. And if you guys like to support the channel, you can do that by way of the Cash App or the Coffee App. Hook a brother up with some coffee, man. I'm just saying. I am thirsty up in this piece. You know what I'm saying? Doing these interviews for you guys is is, is, is a lot. I'm just saying. It's a lot. All right? All right. So let's get at it. Hold on right quick. Let me make sure I get... Let me make sure I get at it. All right. So in today's episode podcast, I found this young lady. She decided to come into our little group. And if you don't know what our group is, it is... I forget what my group is. CDL something you know what i'll look it up for you guys and then i'll i'll tell you what it is but she uh she found the group she wanted to come in and chill with us and all like that but i i caught her at the door you know what i'm saying i was like wait a minute i want to i want to know if you're interested in coming on to the show and she was like maybe maybe i was like it's a good show she said, all right, I'm, I'm available this evening. Let's go ahead and do it. So I'm like, all right, let's do it. So today, and I want to tell you guys a little bit about it right quick. She is a truck driver. She's been driving for two year, two and a half years, right? Right? Yeah. Two, right. Two and a mm-hmm. half years going on three. And she also is a freight broker. And she also trains. So this is a jack of all, and she is a writer. I don't know when she has time to write, but we're going to find out about all this and more in this episode, man. So right now, I would like to bring to the, I, I, would, I would like to bring to the seat, Miss, God damn it. Priscilla <laughs> Brown. Miss Priscilla Brown. <laughs> you see how... You see how I got brain freeze that damn quick? Yes, yes. Damn it, man. Damn it, yes, man. Did. Damn it, man. I tried to give I, I tried to give you a good ass intro and all like that. And all of a sudden, like, I forgot who the hell I'm bringing into the show. Like, the fuck? Okay. You sound like when I do my plays. You uh, sound like when I do my plays. Uh, Sometimes I forget my character. Ah, uh, you know, right? How how hard how hard is that? Uh, being be you 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 mentioned that you do play. So how hard is is that to stay in character? It, it's pretty it's pretty hard. Like for me, I'm I write. I have a, a wonderful casting director, um, who's real good at picking the um picking the cast. He's out of Florida, Shonda Wiggins, and what I tend to do because, you know, as writers, we can be our own critics and sometimes we can get in the way. So when he's picking the cast and putting everything together, I just don't show up until the day of the play. I don't know what's going on. Like even the songs that I write that are in the play, 
I don't, I just hand her the script. She picks out the band, they run with it. And then the day of the play, that's when I know, like, what didn't happen, how it turned out. Um, but the cast is pretty good. And they really be um, into character. Like, one of my um, cast, his name is Anthony Davis. Mm-hmm. He's on Facebook. He's a mentor. And he reminds me of, like, the Nick Denzel Washington. Like, he gets into his character and, and it's like, okay, Anthony, I didn't even know that was you on stage. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's fun. Um, but when I'm writing it, um, I just I just go into the mindset of each character. Like what would they think, whether it's from, you know, the streets or just from anything, I just put myself, you know, into the character, what would they think to do, um, especially when we did the one called Life in the Streets and then me being a little bit from, you know, high school girl to the street, I just knew how to like basically get into the character so- and write it. So Priscilla, how how long you been? How long you been? I'm I'm assuming this is like theater, right? So this is yeah. Mm-hmm. So how how long you been in? Uh, how long you been in theater? How long you been doing this? I've been okay. I've been writing since I was 11 years old. Um, the theater part of it, we just went into production um, in 2008. So I've been sitting on material. I'm constantly writing material. I got new material that's getting ready to come out. Right now, I have someone looking at the movie script. Because what I do is when I write the play, I write what I do is I write the book, then I write the play, then I write the movie, and then I write the TV the TV pilot. Okay. So then that way, it, it all flows. And then to answer your question, how do I find the time? It's just all about having good time management skills, um, just knowing that, when you, you're going to go into something, just knowing that I'm focused, I cannot be distracted. Um, you know the little timers that your grandmothers or mom- mothers used to put on the stove mm-hmm. and they turn the little timer and then just 25 minutes or whatever, ding, and it goes off. That's what I used to put myself into like um, time management mode to know that, okay, I'm zoned out for this period of time or whatever it is that I'm doing. I turn my phone off. I don't Netflix binge. I have nothing against Netflix. Hopefully, they'll pick my stuff up. But I don't Netflix blend, you know, binge on whatever it is that I got going on. I just know this is what I got to do for me. Because by the end of the day, I have a goal and I have a plan that I want to stick to. And in order to do that, I got to stay focused to make things happen. Priscilla, let's let's go back a little bit. Let's let's start with mm-hmm. you know. You say you've been writing since you was eleven. Uh, where are you from? Mm-hmm. Where are you from, actually? Uh, Florida. Okay, okay. So born and raised? Mm-hmm. Born and raised out of Florida. That's, that's my own town. Matter of fact, born and raised out of Lakeland, Florida. Okay, okay. So at the age, mm-hmm. so at the age of at at the age of eleven, you started you started writing, you started uh, writing little stuff here and there. Was you? Mm-hmm. Was you in like plays like when you was younger than eleven, or it this all started? Mm-hmm. This all started when you know at 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 the coming of age of eleven. It all started at the coming at coming of age of eleven. Um, my my um, mom's sister, my aunt, she got me more into writing speeches because she's always seeing you know seeing the talent that I have. So it went from. Being involved in speeches to me just like writing plays, to writing music, to writing rap, to writing poetry, just constantly writing. I have books and books and notebooks of material that I just wrote. Like if something came to mind, I wrote it. I used to go to the studio, um, let me see when I was around about sixteen, seventeen. Mm-hmm. I started going to the studio. Um we used to have talent shows in our town um, at Simpson Park. I used to perform at the talent shows. Um, used to go perform in, you know, in Tampa. So it was just a lot of things that I was doing coming up in age, and I was just so like intrigued in the, you know, in the entertainment industry. Okay. So as you as you growing up, as you growing up, mm-hmm. uh, you getting more and more into into drama, into theater. Uh, yeah. Where did where uh 
did, where did it all come to, you know, you getting into the actual stage? Um, and when I was living in Orlando, um, friends of mine knew what I was capable of doing and knew I was, you know, his material. So there was this bishop, um, who really believed in me. Mm -hmm. Um, and one day I just, you know, asked him, I said, Hey, I have this play and I want, I just feel led to put this play out there. So he sponsored it. Like he actually put up the money, the, um, to cover the whole, like, everything involved, you know what I'm saying, in the play. So he covered the whole play itself. And then we did it. It was so funny. He even sponsored it for us to be able to do it in his church. But it ran into like a flood issue in the church that we then turned around and did it at this um this other theater, um, which was in Winter Springs, Florida. We mm -hmm. did it there at that theater and then we went to another theater. I can't remember the name. But it, it was a big popular theater there, and we ended up in that location for free. And then that's when it just started, you know, happening from Life in the Street to my other play called Hook. Okay. So that's just, you know, how, you know, it went about. Like, there was just something that was like, woke up and said, hey, let's do this. Send them the material, hey, let's do it. And then I did the research on finding sponsors, how soon you should be trying to find a sponsor how well you should put together the play to sell the tickets and everything. So that's how everything starts falling together. Okay. Okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. So what about, uh, mm -hmm. so when did you, when did you start getting, I guess, paid for, for I got, this? For my, for my own play? Yeah. When, um, when did you start got, getting, when did you start getting paid for, for the plays that you're producing? The, the day of the, the day of the, like when the ticket sold, I was getting paid. And then what I would do with the money that I was making for the ticket, I would turn your back to the community. Like buying backpacks, school supplies, um, paying rent for people who needed it, um, paying, you know, other people who needed assistance with medicine. I would pay for prescriptions. Like a lot of stuff that I did, I gave back to the community. Okay. So I have any, have any major, uh, producers have, have I've never pre I've never presented it to major producer producers because I always wanted to do my own independent thing mm -hmm. and now I'm getting to the point where I'm like okay now I want to see who hands I can put it in before I wasn't even concerned about it I was more concerned about just getting my plays out you know what I'm saying out to the community out in the area that I'm in and mainly working, trying to tour it through, like, my own state. Because sometimes what happens is, you know, you can bring in producers, and then your idea of how you see that it needs to go, mm -hmm. then when you start bringing in different investors and stuff, then they can come in and change up everything, you know, that you put into, like, change it completely from the original way that you had it. And my idea and my thought has always been, let me try to do what I can to get it out there. And now we have YouTube. You know what I'm saying? To do the um, web series, different things like that. Let me see what I can do to get out there. If I can collectively raise up the money to be able to produce my own stuff. Oh, like okay. I have friends who, you know, who have their own film, you know, their own film crews. I have um, other friends that's in Lakeland, Polk County, that mm -hmm. they, um, you know, they write their own material, they rap. So, like, if I needed certain, um, you know, sound or certain music, uh, for my player or anything like that, I can reach out to them and say, hey, I need y'all to do this little part, you know, just to help me, you know, build the whole thing. All right. But now I'm looking at, like, okay, let me see who I can, who hands I can get it into. All right. Give me a second. Okay. All right. So let's, uh, let's, let's get into, you, you're doing these plays, you're writing, you, you yeah. obviously making, making good money. You know, it may not be the mm -hmm. best money, but you're making good money. Why? Mm -hmm. uh, what was the? What was the? What was the migration into trucks? Why? What was? <laughs> what, what brought you to the trucking I've community? Always, this is this is so funny. I've always loved trucks, but I was more of a fan of dump trucks. Okay. That's, even from a little girl, I've always been into trucks, but more of, like, you know, dump trucks and stuff. Just, just, like, 
Um, I'm a two. I'm a child of three. Um, I have a sister, and then you know I have um a bro- two brothers. And the thing is, like everybody always say, I'm my daddy's child. You, you understand what I'm saying? So there's that like tomboy side out that will come out. Mm-hmm. But I've always loved like trucks. But I really wanted to get into as far as you know the dump truck, you know part of it, and then. So then I um I got it with my husband and you know pushed him and he pushed himself got his CDL and what happened was um his brother in law was mm-hmm. the one that was like um because I everybody say um my brain is like a sponge so where I can soak in something quickly he tell it to me then I know how to run with it so my brother in law just told me he was like um why don't you try to get into you know um pushing loads and, and connecting with shippers. You know, different things like that. So mm-hmm. when that was brought about, it made sense that, okay, well, my husband got his CDL. Let's, you know, connect the two. Let's connect the two dots. He have Abron, you know, Abron Trucking, and I have EBA Freight and Logistics. Okay. So that was established in 2013. Okay. So you, so, so how, there, so where, where did you? Okay, hold on. Oh, damn it. Where did mm-hmm. you go? Where did you go to where did you go to get your license? Did you go to a school or did uh, you go to a, a trucking company? I took a own I went I took for the freight broker and I took an online course. I can't remember the name of it because I don't think they do it no more. But it was connected with get loaded. And as far as the license, you can get your license anybody can basically get their license through the FMCSA. You just apply for the MC number and when you apply for the MC number. No, I'm talking about um, you you hold on, you're talking about your broker license, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I'm yeah, I'm I'm, I'm talking I'm talking about your CDLs. Now my CDL, I got that around about two thousand and um eighteen. Right. And I went to truck driving school. Mm-hmm. I went to um during that time I went to Georgia driving the cat. Oh, okay. So you went to, so do you you didn't go to uh you didn't go to a school that was in Florida you you went all the way up to Georgia mm-hmm. then? yeah because that's yeah because Florida is my life you know coming up and then I moved to Georgia uh, and this, then I went to truck I, yeah. uh, uh, okay and then later see, on I, went. I got something for I I got something for that and I do I do not understand why I I do not understand why oh. you guys like to migrate to Georgia like. What what is Georgia like? You was grow you was you was born in Florida, but you yeah. you 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 moved to Georgia. Why did you move to Georgia? What, let me let me tell you, Georgia is the life for when you have children. Okay, and so in Florida, wait 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 wait, Florida isn't? I mean Disneyland. No. Well, Florida is right. But then, like, I went from Florida. Then I went from Florida to Louisiana. Then from Louisiana to Georgia. Okay, so so you went yeah, from so, you went from Louisiana to Georgia. So how Georgia. how long? Yeah, because Louisiana is not the life for children. Okay, no sir. So that's why you. So that's why you. So that's why you moved to Georgia, so you can. So you can build a better life for, for your kids. How many kids? Yeah, how, you got daughters. <laughs> how many kids? How how many kids you have? I have two two um two girls and one boy. All right. So, so in Georgia, uh, mm-hmm. was you still before? Was you still? concentrating on your on your writing and your plays and stuff like that in Georgia as I, well? I, yeah, I always concentrate on my, I haven't been producing them lately, but as far as concentrating, I'm always writing. Like, I'm always writing. Okay. I can go to sleep and wake up and there's an idea that comes to mind. For me, let me tell you how long it takes me to mm-hmm. write a play. Mm-hmm. I can sit down at a computer and if I'm not distracted or anything, then I can write a whole play in the day. Oh, okay, that's what's up. All right, so Georgia, yeah. so what's the name of the trucking school? Georgia Driving Academy? Yeah, Georgia Driving Academy. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. Boy, let me tell you. Okay. 
Let me tell you. I'm listening. I'm listening. <laughs> that was an experience. <laughs> okay. How how, how that, that you was, you 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 sounding like it was a bad experience. What's what's up now? Georgia Driving Academy, um, in Columbus, Georgia. Mm-hmm. It's good. Don't get me wrong. I had some real good trainers there, mm-hmm. but but how I'm gonna say it is, and some women may not agree, and some may. But you know how there are certain things that you consider like this is for a man and this is for a woman. Oh, I okay. got my experience of this is really like a man's world. Well, when it comes to trucking. Well, you got to understand. But, you you got to understand that this is a male dominated industry. I mean, you know, women. Yeah, you know, women. Is. Women coming in. You know, and I I love spotlighting women. I I love. I love, yeah. you know, I love you guys coming in doing something that was that's out of the ordinary, that's something that you right. you know that that you want to take on and make it your own. You see what I'm saying? You right. guys want to come in and make it your own, but you still got to realize that this is a male dominated industry, a industry that males mm-hmm. still not some males still not uh accepting women as equals in this industry. Right. And you know, and it's funny because you're right. Cause sometimes I run into, you know, me and they'd be like, when I say I got my, you know, I have my CDL, they kind of look funny. But then sometimes when I would be out on the road, like coming through the rest areas or something, mm-hmm. and it would be some men out there that was truckers that would realize I'm a truck female. They would give me my pop. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But, but Try doing years, but doing school uh, you but doing school they 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 pretty much grinded your grinded your behind oh they didn't play that that's one thing I could say about Columbus driving academy the 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 three good great four great trainers that I had um because they knew my husband was a trucker, so they knew that when I finished that I was gonna be going on the truck with him, so they showed no mercy like at all they didn't from my backing up to learning how to preach real to learning the parts on the truck, they showed no mercy at all. And it was good because I learned, you know what I'm saying? I learned a lot, you know, from them. Like I remember one day I was trying to um back the truck up. It wasn't the straight line backing. It was another move. I can't call it off the top of my head, but it's it's all about backing into the um uh, docks and boy this particular day was so frustrating for me. I slept, I threw the truck in gear, left the truck running, and jumped out the truck. And I was like, I'm done. I'm like, I'm so done with this. I can't even deal with it. That's from, you know, the female stand, you know, standpoint of it. But they showed a lot of support, you know, to understanding that how frustrating it could be. So I commend them because then they started getting, like, on my level, to understand, okay, look, this is we if we teach like this, but we're gonna teach you like this. And then I got it, you know, I got it down, went on to take the test and got my CDL. Okay, okay. So what school so you so after school, what mm-hmm. com, what was the first company that you went with? Oh, we went with a company named Benny Whitehead. Out of you follow Alabama. You you and went to took, you, wait 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 um, you went to who? What did we? Um, Benny Whitehead out of you follow out of Alabama. Benny Whitehead. Mhm. Wait, am I saying that right? Benny yeah, Whitehead. Yep, yeah, Benny Whitehead. Mm-hmm. Is, that's the name of the trucking company. That's a trucking company. Mhm. Okay, I got mm-hmm. I I gotta go and look that up. You say Benny Whitehead. Yep. Yeah. I ain't yep. never, I ain't never, mm-hmm. I ain't never well heard. Too. I ain't never heard of them. So, mm-hmm. I, what was your, what was your experience with them, uh, coming on being the new driver, um, working oh, with was, them? It was good because I was, it was good because I was team driving with my husband. So, it was a great experience, and that's in, in, in a lot of trucking companies. Like when you're coming on team driving as a husband and wife. Now, I'm not going to tell the secret to that, but we, most, any truckers will be able to read the line, basically. So, so you, they love when you're coming on. 
so, as a husband and wife team driver. So you mentioned so you mentioned that you're so you're married. You still married, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm okay. Mm-hmm. And you guys you guys still teaming together or y'all or y'all driving separate now? No, now he's off the road and I'm off the road. Oh, um, okay. So, yeah. Yeah, we I came off the road around about January because the truck that we was in, and if you Google search it, um, had caught a truck fire. This was in um, Utah. I can't think, remember what part of it was. So but you, a mattress had caught, caught up under the truck. And then the whole truck caught the fire. We were still able to drive from and they took care of us like wait wait they, wait wait they, wait um, y'all, wait you talking about a you you talking about the mattress inside the bunk or a mattress mm-hmm. that y'all ran over or whatever yeah it was a, what happened was somebody was transporting mattresses down the highway they didn't have the mattresses strapped down so one of the mattresses looked like went off the um there the back of their truck mm-hmm. and went up under you know our truck. Oh. And the way some of the yeah, and the way some of the highways is, um, you don't always have a chance to be able to pull the truck over. You know okay, what I'm and the sparks, like the sparks uh, yeah. from the mattress mm-hmm. ignited. It it ignited mm-hmm. it ignited the truck or it ignited the trailer. Yeah, it it, it ignited the the whole like it's the whole truck burn. Oh, the trailer man. burned too, but. It, it, the, 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 when the fire department came, they cracked the joke because what was inside the truck was um, a bunch of potatoes. So they wow. were like, "Where's the ketchup?" Wow! Yeah. So, I'm glad that I'm, I'm glad that you guys are here, man. I'm glad yeah, that you guys was, are here. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was tragic because I was on the inside of the truck while <laughs> my husband was out trying to, you know, put put the fire out, and we see he couldn't get the fire out. So he was able to get me out of the truck. So oh, I was on man. the inside of the truck, sleep. <sighs> well, I, I got to give you, I got to give you that, man. So you know, for survival. How long ago was this? Right. This was in two thousand and let me see, last year. Last year, twenty nineteen. Last year, mm-hmm. well, man. Mm-hmm. And y'all, y'all been driving, y'all been team driving with with uh, with the same company ever since you came out of school, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, what mm-hmm. about now? Now, what a, you know? I want to touch on your husband for you know for a hot second. What a, uh, did he have his license before you, or did y'all get your license yeah, at the he, same time? Yeah, he had. Uh, uh-uh, he had his license before me. He's been he's an experienced driver for like seven plus years. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Okay, so mm-hmm. so yeah, he, he know that highway. So, along with you liking dump trucks, you you can attest that your husband was an inspiration for you to get into a truck too, right? Is it safe to say? Yeah, because it was like exactly, yeah. It it, it was. It, I was like, okay, it's time. And when I went to go get my CDL, he was shocked. I didn't even tell him I was going to get it. Okay. Um, and stuff. I have you know friends that assume that you know he told me to go get my cdl because the thing be when the truck is on the road and the wife is at home then he'd be trying to watch his wife but that wasn't the case i just decided to say you know what because i wanted to start my own trucking company so i was like you know what let me get up and go get my cdl because if i decide to start my own trucking company and somebody's driving my truck and they get mad and decide they want to leave it on the side of the road. I don't want to be that chick where I got to find a tow company to go get the truck. You can, I want to you be can that go and get it. Can, I, go and get it yourself. Myself. You and your husband uh, got mm-hmm. to, got together, uh, and mm-hmm. you you came to him. And you said, "Yo, let's uh, let's let's start our own company. Let's uh, let's uh, let's do our own thing." What was the mm-hmm. uh, um? What was the what what was the push reaction? For you? Yeah, well, not the reaction, but what was the push towards you wanting to do your own thing? Um, just anybody who can stay in the trucking industry, the money. Exactly. It's, 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 with, with the truck, it's the money behind it. You know, when you look at the numbers by the end of the day, it's, it's the money behind it. That's 
that's the that's the motivation for even when you go over the road because you don't want to be away from your family. But for me, even when I was driving, and, and so what kept me pushing that truck was just the money. All right, so, so money was the mo- was my motivation. So the truck, the truck that you guys had was was that a company truck or was that your truck? That 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 was the company truck because we had our truck. Um, we do have a truck, but our truck um something got messed up on it when we put it on with Roadrunner. Mm-hmm. So um, I I can't even say what part of the truck it is. Um, and if he is, he'll start laughing. He'll say, "Oh my God!" I keep telling her what part of the truck it is, but it's the, it's the part that's in the back or something. I don't remember, but that's what has it, you know, has the truck down. So we was just like, it don't make sense for me to have my, you know, my license and not doing nothing with it. So we just, you know what I'm saying? We just made it work. Oh, okay. Because okay. you got to keep, you know, you got to keep your skills up, you okay. know, when, when you're driving. You know, when so, you're driving. So, be, so you guys put your truck up in, in a shop or something like that, but y'all wanted to keep rolling. So that's when you got right. with, that's when you got with Benny right here. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that name. No, it, was a, it was a good company. Um, and when, and even when the fire happened, they didn't, they had us to write out a list of everything that we had on there. That we, you know, we possibly lost, and then, you know, what I'm saying they cut the check. Okay, that's what's up. All right, so yep. you got so you guys got your own truck, y'all. Now you got your own business. You got your own LLC. Mm-hmm. What? Uh, where did where did come where did EBA come into play at? I, all that came around the same time. A Brown Trucking was formed in 2013, and EBA Freight and Logistics was formed in 2013 as well. Because the ideal concept, like most truck drivers um, that's married, is usually like the husband to start the trucking company and the wife to start a brokerage brokerage firm Mm -hmm. or start a dispatching company. You Mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it ran and connect. So when we was in Louisiana, which Louisiana is a trucking, like a major trucking industry. You see what I'm saying? Yep. So um, my brother-in-law at the time was like, go get your broker license. Because I know some uh, truckers, if you get your broker license, they'll, they'll, you know, they will want to run under you. Like I find them low. So that's how that came about. So I did the research and everything. And before the new bond came into effect, back then I think it was a requirement to have I think a ten thousand dollar bond or something up in there, and now I think it's like a seventy five thousand dollar bond that you got to have for it to you know to uh, run the freight brokers line. So during that time, it was good freight broker business was trying to be like up and down, up and down, because just like right now with Corona, you know, it took place a lot of the um. How did shippers, how 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 did uh how did Corona season affect you guys? Okay, so I'm gonna put it like this. As far as the truck driving part of it, it still was good because truckers is what keeps the world going around. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But as far as like freight broken and dispatching, it was kind of bad because you had people inflating rates. It didn't make sense, you know, to truckers. And then some of the shippers, remember, everybody started going into the work at home. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the broker shippers wasn't working at office. They was working from home. So it was kind of hard to get a lot of those shippers on the phone to get loads and keep loads moving. And then some of the borders were shut down. Some of the Mexico borders, some of the Connecticut borders, some of those borders were shut down. So it was hard to get anything coming in or going out. Okay. Now, how about so sometimes you'll find your. How, yeah, I'm sorry. How, how about on a? How about on a? Now that's the trucker side. Now how about on a? Or your on the freight that's broker the, side. That's the broker side. Oh, yeah, that. that's the broker side. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the broker side. And then what happens is when it when it happens like that, um, and stuff, and some other you know freight brokers to all uh, honestly relate. What happens is you then have to make a decision because you still got to survive. Do I want to keep on my freight broker hat, or do I want to put that freight broker hat down and just dispatch? You, you see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that's what you're going to do. You take your freight broker hat off and say, you know what? I'm going to put this to the side and I'm going to just dispatch. Why do people do that? 
because with freight brokering, you're trying to maintain the payment of the bond, right? Right. And you're trying to maintain your low board and your TMS system and different things like that. You're trying to maintain all those extra overhead costs to maintain as a freight broker. As to a dispatcher, you don't even have those overhead costs. The only thing you're dealing with is going on the low board to find the load. Okay, okay. So, uh, so let me ask you this, uh, Priscilla. Mm-hmm. The the mm-hmm. money. So the the revenue that you getting that that you getting. I I'm hearing a lot of truckers complaining about you guys taking majority of the money. So explain to yes, ex, explain to me how how do you you know make it fair for yourself to make money and make it fair for the truck drivers to make money. Okay, so the fair way for a truck driver to make money, um, say I'm just do a small number, say if the load was paying like three thousand, um, then as a freight broker, you may make anywhere between like eight percent, sometimes ten percent. What was going on was mm-hmm. this because there was a shortage. Not saying me as a broker was doing it, but there was a lot of other brokers doing it. And instead, because a lot of the complaints was coming out of a lot of the brokers that was out of Louisiana. Mm-hmm. So because there was such a shortage and the truckers was looking for loads to be able to run, some of those loads were being, um, they, they weren't making money. They was increasing the price. Um, it's like, I'm going to give you a good example. Mm-hmm. You know when hurricane season is around? And then there's a hurricane in town, mm-hmm. and then people driving around and look for gas. Mm-hmm. So gas that may have been like a dollar ninety eight mm-hmm. per gallon, and now, now it's you know, like three dollars. Right, that's what some of the brokers was doing. They was the the, the they may charge five percent of the load, but now during the time of Corona, it was a shortage. You had some of the um brokers inflating their their fee on it. Which was a killer. That's why a lot of uh, a lot of truck drivers were, you know, um, complaining. You see, me being a truck driver and a broker, I could relate because I'm in both worlds. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. why would y'all charge these ridiculous rates, knowing that? Because what people have to understand is, by the end of the day, <laughs> like Kelly, I'm a broker myself. So sometimes I act as a truck and dispatcher, but people got to understand by the end of the day. You may have a connection with a shipper, right, as a broker. Okay. But by the end, they who still has to move the load, the trucker. That trucker still got to get that load to wherever it's at. So in order for that load to be delivered, that's how everybody gets paid. Exactly. Okay. So now that you're a broker, you 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 brought in you 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 brought in and you now you want to bring it out to other truckers that want to that want to flip mm-hmm. uh, over the brokerage. Now you have, mm-hmm. now you started uh, EBA freight broker training. Tell us a little bit mm-hmm. about that. So with EBA freight broker training, um, if they're a trucker, they were already, a lot of them would know how to understand and adjust that. So I'm gonna just say it from both worlds, experience and unexperienced to show you what I do. Um, we train you on how to um, dispatch a load we train you on how to uh, communicate with carriers, and we train you also on how to communicate with shippers. We also uh, show you how to set your business up, because a lot of times this is what happened. This is what's going on now. Everybody don't woke up due to Corona and say, I want to be a freight broker. Or they don't woke up and say, I want to be a dispatcher. But if you've never been on the road, so you would sound like it's simple, and it's really not. You got to know how to, like, for instance, when you're talking to the shippers and you're trying to get them to be on the same board with you, right? Then one thing I learned from being on the road and my husband talked about this, which was the continuous temperature on strawberries. Mm-hmm. So if you really don't know that lingo to be able to talk to them shippers, then how are you going to be a freight broker? So we train you from the bottom up. We train you from dispatching, how to set up your dispatching department, to training you how to um, be a freight agent, and how to set up your freight agent department, which is dealing with the shippers. And then now you move into the part of recruiting and knowing how to recruit different truckers because some people start up freight, freight broken because they want to start their own uh, own trucking company. So we also teach you on how to go out and recruit truckers for um, other trucking companies. 
the final part to this, then we show you how to be a freight broker. Because a freight broker is just like a mortgage broker and also like a real estate broker. They're the overseer over the paperwork and the documents. So if DOT come in and do an audit, anything wrong with their audit is going to fall on their freight broker. It's not going to fall on the agents. It's not going to fall on the dispatchers. It's going to fall on the uh, freight broker. Even after you complete our training, we continue to train. Like, there is ongoing training. There is no stop for training or whatever. When, even when you say, okay, I feel good, I'm ready to set up my freight broker's fund for my surety bond, for my MC number, for everything that I need to have in place, my cargo and liability insurance. If you still need to be training, we continue to train. All right. That's what's up. Hold on for a second. Hold on. All right. So. 13 years of experience in the transportation mm -hmm. industry, EBA freight mm -hmm. broker training, uh, $550, uh, per person. Uh, you can mm -hmm. find, you can find this young lady at two or two, one, six, goddamn, eight, six, three, seven, seven, four, mm -hmm. three, one, mm -hmm. one, 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 three ones. Correct. Uh, you, yep. can, you can mm -hmm. also you can also find her on Facebook at EBA mm -hmm. Freight Broker and Logistics Training, and the mm -hmm. e email is training at EBA Freight Broker Logistics dot com. Yep, and we have trainings Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and Saturdays is optional because I understand uh, sometimes truckers be busy during the week. So we also train on the weekend. We just try to work with the schedule. But our training is in Monday, Wednesday, Friday, open and available to um, anybody. And if they mention, if they call and they mention and they said they heard um, about EBA Freight and Logistics training on your podcast, I will give a 10% discount. That's what's up. That's what's up. Pris Priscilla Brown. Priscilla Brown, everybody. <laughs> 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 see, I, see, see, I, see that brain freeze I just I, you know what Priscilla I, I, I really appreciate you coming on uh, letting no every problem. letting everybody know about uh, you know about how you got your humble beginnings to your trucking uh, experience and now uh, freight brokering um Mm -hmm. What what is what's 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 the goal for you in the future, man? I mean, what's what's the what's the end goal my, for you? My final goal after all of this is said and done is to look move to Maine in a a, a log cabin and just write. <laughs> okay, that's what's up. That's what's up, man. That's right. I love to write. <laughs> what what is what uh what kind of advice or what kind of tips that you have for females that's interested in doing what you're doing? I would tell females for for me, this is my personal experience. Um, if you're gonna get into trucking, go all the way, try to get your CDL. Do learn about dispatching, learn about freight broken. Some females be like, I don't want to go over the road, but I'm going to tell you something like this. Experienced truck drivers know when you're green to the industry, and if you don't know what you're talking about, you need to learn it. Go to truck stop, learn how to pre-trip trucks. Just learn any and everything you can about it because, like you said earlier, it really is a male-dominant industry. So in order to dominate it yourself, you got to know it. You can't just be talking it, you got to know it. Get them learn about way scale tickets. I mean everything. Uh, cause the person can tell you on the phone all day that the truck weighs this much. And then you book a load to find out later on that that truck had that truck had more weight on this truck than supposed. And then now this truck gonna stop at a way scale station and the way scale station is shut them down so they can can't continue with the load. So I just tell, you know, females get into it, money, great money to be made, and don't give up. All right, all right. All right, Patricia, thank you very much for coming on. I really do appreciate it. Um, that's, no problem, that's, anytime, and I'm glad you asked. <laughs> that's not a problem, man. Thank you. Like I said, I, I think I learned a lot. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you know what okay, I'm saying? Okay. Uh, yeah. But one last question before we get up out of here, man. Sure. Uh, you know, and I I know I asked you this early about you know producers mm -hmm. uh, coming out looking for you, but have Tyler Perry came knocking at your door yet? No, uh, uh and I'm gonna say this, and this is honest information from mm -hmm. people that have seen my plays. Mm -hmm. I love Tyler Perry, don't get me wrong, but people that have honestly came out to see my plays or said my plays are even better than Tyler Perry. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's just what they told me. Oh, is, 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 you know, is, is that is is that is is that is is that shots fired right there? <laughs> no, no, because mm he's -hmm. in the industry. Stop I'm just saying it, what people it. say have told me about my plays um and stuff i'm a good fan you know so <laughs> mm. I, I have nothing against that man his, his stuff is good his materials is good um i support any black entertainer um in the industry but a lot of my motivation came from on david Tyler. that's just that's just straight up when i reached out to him and asked him for advice he gave me advice straight from his Facebook page. And you could tell it wasn't nobody just writing. It actually came from him himself. So, oh, man, I that's mean. That's what's up. That's what's yeah. up. Yeah. So, well, that's how I, and that's how I got into it. That's how I really got motivated. So, well. Yeah. Well, Patricia, you're you're part of the LOM community. Thank you very much for coming on. I really do appreciate it. Uh, and that's about it. You, 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 you. You you have any parting words? I mean, you know, mm -hmm. if you yeah, had... just tell everybody keep doing keep doing what you do. <laughs> all right, all right. And on that note, everybody, that is it. If you like to come on and chop it up with the lockout men, that is me. You can do that by hitting me up in the Gmail. That's lockout men podcast at gmail.com. Or you can see me over at the Instagram at the instagram you can hit me up in the dm over there or you can come if you know me on facebook you can hit me up in the messenger and i am right there so if you guys want to come on chop it up with me be free to come on and do so if you like content like this and more don't forget to like subscribe comment share and hit that bell and that all button so when you know when content like this drop and you know when I go live. Until next time, everybody, y'all take care. And I guess in the words of my man, Trucker Jim, keep on trucking. Searching, searching, searching.